Yeah, you know, one of the things that's so interesting is how dangerous it, it is to read awakening history. Because once you start going there and really uh, seeing this and hearing these stories, you're sort of wrecked for nothing less the rest of your life. It's like, wow, if, if Christianity, if the Christian movement can be this beautiful and this impactful, how could I settle for anything less? And uh, that's what awakening has done to me, awakening history. When you start actually unpacking the fact that really what, uh, honestly, so much of what we still see as remaining in Christian vitality today is the residue of awakening movements. It's just the last vestiges of these beautiful resurgencies of Christianity in its vital expression. Uh, if you trace back most of the, the uh, Christian colleges and universities, the mission agencies, the reform agencies, the, th the, the movements that have led to the greatest sort of uh, strategic change in culture, you can trace almost all of that back to some sort of awakening movement. Back to the first great awakening. I mean, you, six of the nine colonial colleges were the output of awakening. What we refer to the Ivy League today, uh, the whole abolitionist movement, secular historians have traced the immediatism, that, that impulse toward a, that slavery must end now, the resistance to a, any kind of gradual change that there was so much movement toward because it would undo the economy and all this. No, we'll have to bear, slowly pull out. No, the, the abolitionists say, no, it must end now. All of it's been sort of tracked how that really, that impulse was out of the revival meetings of the Second Great Awakening when they would make the strong appeals. Where would you go tonight if you were to die? You need to make a decision tonight. Now is the moment. That immediate call for life change uh, that drove abolitionism, so much of that was flowing out of the justice movement that was the output of the Second Great Awakening. You could just go, the end of child labor, um, the beginning of, uh, you know, the first uh, place where women could go to college university with men was at Oberlin College in Ohio, which was the throbbing epicenter of the Second Great Awakening. It's one of the very first places where freed slaves were being allowed to get a college education. I mean, you could go through layer upon layer of social reform and and, uh, and wonderful movement and change that has happened. It is almost always the outflow of awakening. And then you just keep tracking it all the way back. You can just keep this going all the way back to the, to the birth of the church at Pentecost. Uh, awakening movements really are the golden thread of church history. Our denominations today are just institutionalized awakenings. Awakening is the vibrant, life-giving expression of Christianity that keeps moving it forward. Awakening is really in many ways it's nascent in the church because the Spirit's residence in the church. The Spirit is always there revitalizing, reanimating the church. And um, in, I, I, I often think of as awakening history as sort of the, 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 the story of the church in its high points. And then there's all these sort of uh, ebbs and flows in between. But the real movement points, the, the forward movements are the awakening movements. And so, uh, yeah, it's really the golden thread. I treasure it. Thank you for watching this video. We at Seedbed are sowing for a great awakening. We gather, connect, and resource the people of God. If you would like to join us on this journey, like and subscribe so you can get all the updates and videos. And also take a look at www.seedbed.com for more information on all of our resources.